Now, these aren't secrets because I don't, there are no secrets or any mysteries. I have never been interested in anything other than the how, not the why. Almost everybody in this audience exclusively wants to know why things are done. I have never suffered from that. All I want to know is how it's done. I've never uh, traded off being liked for being effective. If I leave, even a transaction I do, if you like me, I fucked up something. I'd rather be effective than liked. I was raised by my, my father. Sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can never hurt you. The world has changed. It's the opposite. Now, words hurt people. You have people committing suicide on Facebook, etc. And fear is false expectations appearing real. Probably one of the most gifted things my dad ever told me, he says, Danny, it's not what they say to you, it's how you interpret what they say to you. And I've always interpreted it, rightly or wrongly, positively. Because I haven't cared what other people think or say about me. Now, you touch me, that's something else. But the world's fucked up. Professor Hawkins in 2004 said, in his last really coherent interview, where you could actually understand what the hell he was talking about, he said, we are on a small, know-nothing planet, a derivative of a not-that-bright chimpanzee, and our world has reached its apex. I've been saying that 25 years. We're through as a species. That's the real reason they want to go to Mars, Jeff and Elon. I have been the Leonardo of financial consulting, training, whatever you want to call it, for 28 and a half years. And the, um, but this is not politically correct to be like somebody like that. It's not politically correct to talk like that. Elon Musk's favorite word is fuck. His second most favorite word is cunt. Every high performance person, save one, that I've ever met in my life, Uses bad words. Harvard just came out with a study, 40-year study, that, that uh, high-performance people swear more. 40 fucking years! High-performance people swear more. Are you shitting me? Emotionally, financially, and physically, I took no prisoners and still don't. I have a few mentees that are world-class rich. Somebody asked him at one of the Q&As at the castle how much he leaves on the bone. In other words, how much meat he leaves. I don't leave the fucking bone. I leave him dead in the gutter, bled, not bleeding, bled out. And you want to compete in that world? Be my fucking guest. Now, everybody knows that I've gotten beat up in a lot of uh, artificial parts. But I wouldn't trade one of those pieces of steel for the event. I wouldn't trade one of them. A couple, I almost died, but it happens. Yeah. That's the difference. I'm not even going to ask that question. But when I'm at the universities, I ask it, then they, the kids want to be liked. And then some of the kids that think they're intellectuals say, well, isn't there a some kind of halfway, and no, there isn't halfway. I've never met a part-time high-performance person. Never in my life. I demand excellence. I don't ask it. We're in the process of hiring a VP of Human Resources. <laughs> and um, and we, I interviewed one yesterday. Sharp gal. Uh, but it's obvious that we have little or nothing in common. The, um, but when asked about the liked, this is one of my favorite questions when I ask when I'm interviewing, um, she probably was the be gave the best answer. Um, and that you always hope to be liked, but you do what's necessary. That's the best answer I've ever gotten from an HR person. Bottom line is you do what's necessary. You want to live being respected and die that they regret that you died. 
You're all you can be in everything you do. QLA gives you a choice to die financially standing like a man or a woman, or it now, to that it, or continue and die on your financial knees, living quiet lives of desperation as your parents do. I get emails from uh, lady lawyers, and it says she or her on the bottom. She or her. Intellectually, I understand what they're doing, but I don't play the she or her game. Today, I'm not going to teach you, but lead you based on my 50 years uh, experience coaching and mentoring kids to be more than they have ever dreamt they could be super high performance in anything and everything they do. Now, I'm going to spend a couple minutes on this because this is really important. For those of you that remember Ted Williams, the baseball player, I don't know if he was with the Red Sox, Boston, Red Sox, right? Okay, well, anyway, he was the last living person to play professional baseball that ended a full year with a batting average over 400. He batted 405 or 406. Now, if I wanted to, now I'm uncoordinated, I'm very unathletic, but if, if, if I had some athletic, athletics in me, I would have gone to Ted to teach me how to hit. They say that he could see the, um, the, in the baseball, the twine, the, 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 the string, he could see whether it's going to be a drop, a this or that. So now we've got people that want him to get out of the Hall of Fame but because he, he had bionic eyes. We have people that are trying to get him extracted from the motherfucking Baseball Hall of Fame because he's got bionic eyes that weren't legal. They were natural. That's where the fuck we are. Are you fucking shitting me? That's exactly right, kid. It's unbelievable the shit that's going on now. And yet, most of you go along with it. I'm running for politics in the UK, not because I'm going to save the world, but somebody's got to stop it. There's a slide coming up by Elon Musk, in his opinion, and there's nothing humble about Elon. Uh, the, the two greatest uh, uh, um, farces to kill humanity are woke and the PC. And I couldn't agree more. more. 50% of you uh, will run out of money before you run out of time. In other words, you're going to die broke. Oh, they use bad words. I already said that. I got ahead of myself. I can't, I can't even believe that they studied that. I can't. Oh, there's another. Harvard researchers identified a major cause of loneliness as well as a way to tackle it. And loneliness, you can, you can blame on your parents. But you can blame everything on your parents because they fucked you up. I love when they come to the seminar. I've got a grandfather, a daughter, and a granddaughter. All sobbing. Of course, you can tell how, how, uh, how much empathy I give them. And why are you, saw, uh, why are you crying, you old bitch? And she looks at her dad, and he's sobbing. And the two worst answers that the parents and grandparents give me, why'd you fuck them up? You don't know what you don't know, Mr. Benya. And the even better one, I did the best I could. I guess the best wasn't good enough, old timer, was it? You sorry sack of shit. When I got beat by the nuns, and my dad had come home in three weeks, he beat me again. When I got beat by the teachers, my dad had come home in five weeks. He beat me again. This is for the beating you didn't get caught. You got the beating for getting caught, which was true. I was a fucking terror. When I told the teacher, you saw the slide of that principal, and I told him that I dropped the aquarium outside the window. And, I mean, he looked with empathy, you know, like social counseling. And he said, well, uh, I'm surprised you come back to share these experiences here at the school. No, they made me the man I am. I only wish my parents were smart enough to uh, get a couple of trillion dollars out of the Los Angeles City School System. And there is no, there's no time frame for sexual abuse. And they call that sexual, it wasn't sexual, nobody touched me like that. But that's what they call it. 
standing in the closet shitting yourself. I don't, that doesn't sound too sexy to me, but the, um, but that's what happened to me. So when our kids used to come home and complain, fuck, did they hurt you? They touch you? Fuck it, next. I wasn't interested. Now, this slide's in here for a reason. Some of you, this was the assistant, personal assistant to Jeff, Elon, and um, one other uh, big guy. What a coincidence that the same woman, reasonably attractive, would be the personal assistant to those three of the big hitters. You think it's an accident? Hmm, ladies? I don't think so. And you can't say that she has a, she has a, she's hiding her rack. She's hiding it there. And Jeff is Cuban. For the Cuban Nazis in the audience. You think this is just, and now she's writing a book. On Oprah and all this shit and, and the, the questions that the interviewers are asking are all the wrong questions. I know how she got there. I wouldn't stake my life on it, but I'd stake one of your lives on it. Now she's got a, a service that, uh, how to get, no, oh, anyway, I, I don't want to give her too much publicity. That's why her name's not up there. I already said this about working on it. Do you know how many times you say that? I'm working on it. Have any idea? I do. Why is the world, why do you think the world's fucked up? In an emergency situation, it seems 75% of the world, uh, you would rather pull out your uh, iPhone and record it versus stepping in. I took out a slide, uh, a woman being, maybe it's the next slide raped on the uh, underground in Chicago, New York, 90 people in the car. Not one person stepped in and one person dialed 911. I'm going to say it again. 90 plus people in the car. Not one person stepped in to help her being raped or help to get the guy off, you know, and nobody dialed 911. That's where we are. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I remembered it, okay. If you don't think that's fucked up, you're fucked up. I can't imagine that. I asked my daughter-in-law and my youngest son about this. And uh, Derek emailed me back. Am I reading this right, Dad? I said, yeah. And his uh, wife was pregnant with my second grandson. Emily would jump in, they're pregnant. And that's why we have this. Men would rather sleep with pumped up dolls. Unfortunately, I did some research on this. I shouldn't have. But I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know the sophistication of this shit. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I, 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 you know, delete, delete, delete. Um, but uh, male population um, is down in Japan, not just in Japan. Sperm counts are down. All kinds of counts are down. In 1986, the average handshake uh, pressure of a woman was 105 pounds. Of a man, it was 116 pounds, handshake, in 1986. In 2016, uh, for a woman, it was up two pounds. For a man, it's 90 pounds. It's gone from 116 pounds to 90 pounds. They don't say no, I'm told. The dolls don't say no. The dolls don't say, don't touch me. Crying on the job. Eight out of ten workers, and I verified this with our kids. Eight out of ten kids cry on the job at work. Cry over what? I asked our daughter. About anything, Dad. We're fucked. But it makes it the best time of all time to feel that. Because the meatheads, are, those Pollyanna meatheads are more afraid than you are. Which is hard to believe. They have less testosterone than you do. And women do have testosterone as well. 
And the scary thing is, millennials inherit over $40 trillion over the next 40 years. That's scary. And one of the basic reasons is almost everybody treats their decision-making process like Sophie's Choice. And I'm going to take two, three minutes to explain this. There was a great movie in 1982 with Meryl Streep called Sophie's Choice. She got an Academy Award for it. It was about her being in uh, one of the uh, Bougainville uh, death camps during World War II. And she used to sleep, sleep with the commandant for extra blankets and, and food for her two children that were in the uh, concentration camp with her. And one, one morning, here, a captain, Nazi, got up and said, you didn't pleasure me good enough, well enough, so you have to make the choice. One of your children has to go to the gas chamber. And the movie's about which one she picks. And then five hours after she sent one of her little children to the gas chamber, the American, I think, the 101st Airborne, liberates the camp. Five hours later. So now she's got massive guilt. So the rest of the movie is about her going to New York, finding another uh, death camp survivor, and um, they write a book, Sophie's Choice, and they commit suicide together. The decision, other than a couple of doctors who are in the audience, is not Sophie's Choice. Just as I almost instantly, when uh, General Vaughn said, a young man like you would get rich in the civilian world, boom! I'm out of the Army in six months. I was a 5%er. I mean, I was, you know, had a great career ahead of me. You'd still be spreadsheet. Because you're concerned about what your parents are going to say, what your significant other's going to try to say, your brother, etc. About all these people that had li really little or nothing to do with your, your real life, you're worried about them because you would, at the end of the day, would still rather be liked. And being effective is, is a, a distant dream. 76 million, uh, million baby boomers are going to, 25% will live to be over 93. If you were born last year, uh, the odds are 75% uh, that you'll live to be 95. Misery has a way of clarifying one's convictions. People come to me thinking they're inspired. People come to me for one of two reasons, inspiration or desperation. And 99.99999% of you are desperate, not inspired. The biggest challenge they have with accepting QLA is you have to say, with your hand on your heart, or where my heart's supposed to be, hand on your heart, I've wasted 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of my life. And I can't do anything about it. I can't go back. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. That's a hard pill to swallow. There's never an easy time to make a hard decision. Never. It doesn't get easier tomorrow or the next week or the next month. Self-confidence. I've always had self-confidence. But I had a stone fucking assassin for a father. They would rather beat me than look at me. When Sirhan Sirhan assassinated Robert Kennedy, they pulled the old man out of retirement to head up the investigation of the U.S. government. Because they didn't want any fucking mistakes like Dallas. And that's who raised me. So, I mean, it's, it's nature and nurture, it's, it's, it's nurturing. It's not nature. You don't, you're not born Achilles, uh, you know, Achilles. You're not born uh, Mistopheles. You're, that's, you're nurtured into those kind of personalities, just as I have. You pissed a lot of people off. What did you tell them? I thought the fucking truth. My grandmother, God rest her soul, used to say, she came across an you know, illegal alien, I told you that. Uh, when in doubt, Danny, always tell the truth. If it hurts, you're telling, the, you're telling the right thing. And she said, you know, I can't say it in Spanish, translate it in English well enough, but if it doesn't hurt, it's probably not the truth. 